Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Next Drift. I thought what we could do on this episode uh, is talk a little bit about um, some more uh, fishing charts and looking at detailed uh, areas. And I figured we'd focus this particular video on locating good blackfish water. And uh, we'll look at some spots. I'll give you some specifics of what uh, I look for. And uh, hopefully uh, somebody can uh, learn something from this. Um, so anyway, uh, this is Long Island Sound. We have the Connecticut shoreline uh, up top, Long Island, the north side of Long Island uh, down below. And <clears throat> we all know that blackfish uh, in the fall, in the early spring, like, uh, you know, rocky areas. And um, rocky areas are not hard to find. Uh, but what I've noticed is that you know, you're, you have community holes, um, you have places that are very visible, such as jetties, uh, which I, you know, uh, if we go over here um, in the Clinton area, um, you know, there's uh, there's some jetties that are, are obviously very visible. Uh, this one right here, this is Kelsey Point. This is a very well-known blackfish area. This is a very rocky, rocky area, um, and uh, this jetty has some deep water next to it. <clears throat> the rocks are very significant. Um, and, you know, they're obvious because you're going to see a lot of boats around them. So, you know, um, if, if you want to find an, uh, easy spots, just look for these. Um, I have a tendency to stay away from them. I like, as I've said in other videos, I like to hunt for areas that um, other people aren't fishing, the more subtle pieces of structure, uh, so to give you an example of that, um, so this is, this is a, as I said, this is Kelsey Point, uh, just uh, off of uh, Clinton and uh, Westbrook. And, um, you know, there's a lot of rocks. You have uh, the, the, the main jetty that sticks out, and guys will fish over here on this side. Over here, um, they'll anchor up over, you know, um, off, of, uh, off of this side of the jetty. Um, and you'll also see out here... Um, by the uh, the red can that's out here, you can see this R, um, and that means rocks. And you know you have some twenty five foot, twenty four foot uh, guys will anchor up here, depending on which way the the uh, tide is flowing. And uh, this is a, a a good blackfish spot. A lot of guys, and you can see this comes up here to twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. You've got some deeper water. Uh, over here in the 50s, 60s. Um, these are the obvious spots. Why are they obvious? Like I said, it's because a lot of boats will fish on them. Uh, if we go out here to uh, Southwest Reef, this is an incredibly well-known blackfish spot. There's a ton of fish. The structure's good. There's some big boulders. Um, and uh, guys will anchor up... Um, you know, from one end all the way, you'll see boats that are all the way across, uh, all the way out to the very ends to where it starts to peter out. And, um, you know, fishing around people is not, not a bad deal. Uh, I don't get wrapped up over it. I think the only thing that frustrates me, I think, when I go fish areas like this, community holes that have a lot of people, is, you know, guys with anchors and people, you know, swinging in on you or fishing right on top of your anchor. I mean, but other than that, there's so many fish in these areas. And, you know, um, that's the that's part of black fishing is if you're going to fish the community holes that are not hard to find, uh, getting upset, having somebody, you know, uh, you know, 20 yards from you, I think is a little bit ridiculous. Um, there's no secrets when it comes to any any of these spots. Um but just to kind of give you an idea of why, you know, there's blackfish here, you can see, for instance, uh, we have, you know, 60, 70 feet of water around this hump. Uh, and it's obvious. It's 30 feet, comes up to 30 feet deep on the top. And there's rock. There's going to be blackfish here. All day, every day. Um, same with this area over here. So, you you know, you could have maybe 15 to 20 boats that are fishing on top of this. And... Um, they're all going to catch them. There's little specific parts to each one of these shoals. Maybe there's a big boulder or 
something that's a little bit unique out on a piece of structure like this. But for the most part, you know, anybody, you, you can go out there, drop a green crab or a hermit or an Asian or whatever on a jig head, or, and you're going to catch them. I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, here's another spot that if you come in a little bit over here, there's another jetty. This is off of Duck Island. Um, you know, boats will line up over here. There's a rock. Um, there's some rock over here out on the end of this thing. It comes out into 30 feet. You know, I've caught some decent fish over here before. Um, and, you know, if you just want to go for a quick trip, get a get a quick limit. You're not looking for any real giants or big numbers. Um, these are the kind of spots that you'll go to. Uh, they're easy to find um, and all that stuff. <clears throat> but what I like to do, because I really like like to search for the fish and find my own little spots where maybe, you know, I don't have people fishing so close to me. Uh, let me give you, let me give you a great example of one right over here. Again, this is Kelsey point right off of the uh, coast of uh, Clinton and um, Westbrook. Um, guys will fish. There's a lot of boats that'll fish along here. Like I said, a lot of guys will fish out here on this rocky area. That's out by the can. Um, but I found a little nugget. And there was a lot of fish here uh, at one point. I think there was um, a big school that had staged up on this spot. They spent a lot of time here. Uh, and then, you know, a few trips in, there weren't so many, uh, as many numbers of fish, but they were big ones. Um, and I found, you know, this area you can see here, you know, there's 19 feet. It's a subtle depth depth. Uh, depth change 22 feet 24 feet comes up to 19 um but the big piece of this was right around in here and i found a small point of rocks that came out uh right out in here i found it on the side imaging there was uh, two or three big boulders that were surrounded by some chunkier rock and uh we got some uh Pretty funny looks when we were anchored up out here because everybody was fishing, uh, you know, over here by the uh, by the jetty. And we're anchored up over here and people probably thought we had no idea what we were doing, but we were catching them one after another. It was a lot of fun. And um, so, you know, that was a, a, a unique little spot close to home. Um, never saw anybody else fishing over here. And, um, you know, so I, we had that spot to ourselves all year which was, which was pretty cool. You know, um, it was nice to find a piece of structure that nobody else was fishing that had fish on it. Um, so let me, let me take you out here. So if we head straight out, I'll give you another, uh, kind of a unique spot. And again, this was something that I had found. Um, you know, there's no secrets, especially black fishing. Everyone's anchored. You have a million boats on a spot. Um, when I had first found this spot, there was nobody out here. Um, and uh, a couple of my buddies and I, we went out, we did some searching. I saw a couple R's on the, uh, on the map and we went out and uh, investigated. And sure enough, uh, we found some um, really productive water that hadn't been touched. And uh, let me just show this to you real quick. So right over here, there's two big humps. Um, and, you know, you've got some 60, 70 feet of water off the sides. This point kind of comes out here like this, goes back out into deeper water again. The top of this hump is uh, 43 feet deep. This one over here is 45. And um, when you really started looking at this, this piece of structure was interesting because you had two high spots, a 43 and a 45 that were relatively close to each other, but right in the middle, you had 47. And why is that important? Well, when the tide was going, this there was fish, you could catch fish here very consistently on either incoming or outgoing tide. But what made this particular spot so unique was we found what I like to call the spot on the spot. You, you hear that term, the spot on the spot. And the spot on this spot <laughs> was right about in here, uh, right here, and right here, and right over, right around in this area, right here. Um, and there was there were some other little bit 
some other little pieces that were on this particular structure. But what made this unique was the water on the incoming tide would flow straight through here. It created a funnel. Um, and also on the outgoing tide, right back in here, you would have a burst of water that would rush back and forth through here because the water was slowed up as it hit either side of these two humps and it was forced to, f to go through uh, this, this narrow channel. And the fish would use that. They would sit over here out of the current. So if the, if the tide was going out, the fish would sit on either the inside, just inside, or just over here and wait for, wait for bait. Um, they were positioned uh, so they didn't have to swim hard. And they were using this current, right, that went in through here, uh, you know, as uh, to their advantage. So, you know, you could drop an anchor here and then, you know, as we, as the weeks had gone on and, you know, it goes where nobody's out there, um, the next thing you know, there's, you know, a hundred boats <laughs> and that happens. It's part of black fishing. Um, you know, people would be anchored up all along here and, you know, and, and everybody would be catching them, but the best, best parts of this that I don't think people realize were, you know, right in here and right in here. Um, it was nice and rocky. There were big, chunky rocks. Uh, and that's the other thing I wanted to bring up, too. A lot of these spots that I'm looking for, um, the best spots seem to have one or two or three really big pieces of rock that stand out. Uh, and, and they're surrounded by some smaller size rock. So if you find a great big boulder, whether it be on a 2D sonar or if you're lucky enough uh, to have uh, down down imaging or side imaging, um, and you can pick out the smaller pieces of rock that are that are surrounding one one or two or three big pieces of rock, those are going to be the best spots. Uh, blackfish, um, they 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 seem to kind of they move in schools. Uh, you'll you'll have different schools that will move in and out. Some schools will have smaller fish. They'll all be keeper size, you know, that 16, 17 inch range. And then as the tide starts to slow down in that last 90 minutes, right before slack of either in go, uh, incoming or outgoing, um, you'll, you'll have uh, another school of fish that will move in. And those could all be, you know, four pounders, five pounders, six pounders. The, and, and you'll just see that. They'll come in waves. Um, but I really do believe that some of the biggest fish, the schools that have those bigger fish in them, those guys get the pick of where they want to sit. They'll sit um, in areas like this, and they'll, you know, usually kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a territorial thing or whatever it may be, but usually the, 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 the best pieces of a particular piece of structure uh, have the biggest fish on them. So... Uh, that's 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 one uh, interesting piece of structure that uh, that we really liked, and then you know there's a couple more. Here's uh, another one here, same type of thing. Uh, now this one you'll notice this says 58 feet here, and it, if we kind of scroll across, you see it goes to 61, uh, and then it kind of stuff. There was no it did, this particular piece of structure didn't have that kind of a dip, a little saddle in between those two humps. Um, you know, was there fish there? Sure. Just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't as productive, um, especially for anything that was, uh, that was bigger, you know? So, um, that, you know, places like this, it's, and that's why I say, take the time. It's one thing to look at a, at a, at a map at home, a paper map or something like that, but investing in good electronics, uh, with a good chip in the previous video I did like this, I had said uh, that I run, the Hot Maps uh, Premium. I don't run Premium. I run uh, run the Platinum, the Platinum chip. Uh, I apologize. I misspoke about that. Um, but uh, uh, the the Platinum uh, the Platinum chip has a lot of detail. Very very um, uh, you know narrow depth changes. Lots of good contour lines. Um, so invest in a good graph. The bigger the screen that you can afford to buy, the better, because you're going to have more detail up close to you. Um, and, you know, I spend a ton of time not just looking here 
you know, on a you know, either paper map or on the computer. But, um, you know, I spend a lot of time when I'm behind the wheel and driving slow and exploring and looking for these little tiny pieces. Same thing. This is, Here's another spot here. This was a good one. Uh, 36 feet on this side, 35 feet on this side. And in between you had that, you know, that 40 foot, same type of setup. The water would flow, except it would flow a little bit differently just because of how this particular piece of structure is positioned where the, the outgoing tide would come down through here and it would create kind of a backwash out in this area. And this particular piece was right in here where we found, um, the biggest fish on this particular piece of, uh, of structure. Um, you know, uh, another good spot when the water would come back through here. Oh man, see this little, you have this little point that comes down here like this. It drops off into 47 feet. If you can see this little nook, see this little piece that sticks out right here, right? If we scroll over it, it kind of, it, it peters, it, 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 it kind of, this 47 feet kind of pulls out this way. And right in here, um, this is actually a big piece of rock, one big piece of rock that's sitting there. That's why if you see, notice these contour lines are a little misshapen. Um, they kind of pull out a little bit before they start to bend back in. That is actually a boulder that is on the bottom. Um, it's incredible what they do. I have to be honest, these hot maps uh, chips that they, that they can pick this up. But, <clears throat> um, you know, this is, this is really amazing. Uh, Amazing stuff. This was an awesome spot. This is the kind of spot that I'm always looking for. These little pieces right here, just like this. This is the spot on the spot. Another one here, more rock. This one is another point. And you can see here, this one kind of dips down. It has like another step. Um, you, know, you get 56 feet here. So, you know, uh, I have so much fun doing this. <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, you know... But as far as blackfish go, you know, any type of rigs that you want to use, I really do prefer, um, I like the jig heads. Um, I know there's a lot of different companies out there. I have just, I think it's a lot of confidence. They make a good product. I use s, &S. Uh, I like the hooks. I think they're a little bit thinner wire hooks. Um, I like the shape of the jig heads uh, a little bit better. Um, and... I use as light a jig head as I possibly can. I very, very rarely go above two ounces. And when the tide picks up and the current's really ripping, you're not going to be able to use it. You know, you'll fight it all day long. I use it on a spinning rod with a 10-pound braid and a 30-pound leader. Um, you know, anything up above that that two-ounce uh, weight, it gets really hard to feel the fish. Um, so, you know, what do you do? Well. Honestly, I just wait. I know the fish are there. Uh, I wait and, you know, I'll start, I'll start with like an ounce and a half and I'll throw it up, up current a little bit, out and up, you know, the, up towards the anchor and let it drift back down and I'll reel to it and, and till I feel that thing bouncing and I'll walk it right past the boat in front of me and then let it drift out a little bit, maybe let it go out a little bit further past the back of the boat and I'll reel it up and do it all over again. But I noticed that, especially on any of these types of spots, where you anchor the boat, so say for instance, you know, we're we're fishing, um, you know, this piece right here, uh, the anchor is up here and the boat's right about here, you know, so I'm fit, we're, we're really, you know, fishing is this kind of little section that's right in here. Um, when the current slows down enough to get that light jig head, and it is light, you know, um, uh, when the current's slow enough to where that jig head is sitting straight up and down, almost right in front of you, with a maybe a slight drift, uh, that's when you catch the biggest ones. I don't know why. I think it's just the fact that the fish, the bigger fish are more lethargic. They're not looking to um, stay out in that, you know, hard pulling water. And I think that lighter jig head allows them to pick the whole thing up much easier. Um, they're savvy fish. They're not stupid. Um, but the bigger ones, you know, it allows them to pick that thing up and um, um, you, you, you end up catching bigger fish that way. So um, rigs are fine, though. If you like using the rigs, you know, guys using these high-low rigs, um, there's different variations of a high-low rig with a weight and a, and a 
double hook or a single hook or however you want to do it. Um, you know, but I really prefer the jig head. I like the feel of it. And I just feel like I, I can consistently, uh, catch more fish, not because I, you know, I feel like I'm a better fisherman than anybody on the boat. I just have the feel down. I know the feel. I know when that bite, what the bite feels like to, and, and knowing when to set the hook based on how it feels. And that feel is only going to happen with a jig head and a spinning rod because of how, how sensitive the whole little package is. Um, so that's what I prefer, you know, but other guys like using a heavier, you know, level wind or a bait cast or something like that with a, a heavy rod and a big heavy weight. And, you know, some guys will use 12 ounces, 14 ounces, however big you want, you know, uh, big you feel like you need. Um, I, but I, I just, I feel like I catch more fish than, than most of the people that come on the boat. Um, you know, not because I have the, a better spot on the boat or a different type of bait. It's just that my feel is a lot better with a lighter jig head and a spinning rod. They're getting bites and not not knowing when to set the hook uh, as 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 well as, as I am because of how it feels. Um, you know, so I'm always pushing the guys, bring a light spinning rod. Bring, you know, I've, I've got plenty of jig heads, lighter jig heads, try it. And guys will look at you funny because they're like, how the heck are you holding bottom? Well, you're not. You're not holding bottom. I don't want it just sitting there. I want it. You're equate it to if you've ever been trout fishing with a mealworm. That's how I fish for blackfish. As light as I can go, feeling that jig head bouncing along every little rock, controlling its movement, making sure it stays as, as in much contact with the bottom as possible, um, and 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 really honing your feel, the feel in your fingers, the feel of the line. How your rod tip, uh, rod tip feels. Holding, I hold my rod tip down a little bit, uh, making sure that you know I'm and I'm staring at it, waiting for that the the, the bite to feel a certain way. Uh, are they are they just picking at the crab? Are they biting the legs off? Are they you know biting pieces off? And I'm waiting for that specific bite when I know that they've taken the actual hook and the jig head, uh, and then you lay into them. So black fishing's fun. Um, but like I said, so that this is about the the spot specifics and how how to find them. The best advice I can give you, like I said, get some good electronics. Get one of these Hot Maps premiums uh, or, or platinum chips. Uh, if you can get the platinum, if you can afford the platinum, get the platinum and spend some time. Get to know what everything looks like on here. Get your settings right. Um, you you will be amazed. Um, as to how many spots are out here that probably have never been fished before um, because nobody's looking. They just, guys go out, they want it to be easy. Where's the biggest fleet of boats? Head that way, drop the anchor, everybody make room. Yeah, that's fine. That's part of the fun. I don't get bent out of shape over it. Um, I look at it as, you know, I'm not going to spot burn because if I find a spot and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of people, well, I know I can go out and find another one because there's a whole bunch of them I haven't found yet. And um, so to me, I'm always going to have my own spot <laughs> because I know how to read my map. Um, but anyway, I hope you find this useful. Once again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share some of our videos. Um, you know, we're trying to get our subscribers up. Uh, we have a really good time doing these. I've got some really cool things planned for, uh, for the beginning of the season with Next Drift. So again, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody.